Are we good to go? Awesome. Thanks everyone uh, for coming over to our session. So I'm Said, uh, I'm project manager at Meta. I'm working um, with Yunzi and Yunzi is joining me today for the presentation. Do you want a quick intro? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Yunzi Lin. I'm a, a data analyst at Meta, working in the same teams with Said. Uh, oh, <laughs> sure. And yeah, my focus, uh, it's on the We are we are focused on uh, the quality of the the maps at Meta, and hence this is what what our talk will be uh, primarily talking about. Awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if I need my microphone, but yeah, I think it's going to be very complementary after like OSM data uh, pedestrian data standardization and then OSM pedestrian working group update. So we are coming up like streamlining data quality checks for pedestrian map data on OSM. Before starting, like, I want to quickly talk about like uh, maps at Meta. You may be wondering like why the heck Meta is making maps, and then background information. And we will Yunzi talk about like quality checks, and I will also talk about like community engagement. So first of all, like Meta use open data to build our maps, and working with partners, and we are improving maps in the open. So whatever we are building is open, but our, whatever we are uh, also improving is open. So supporting maps in the community. So we maintain products like Rapid and Mapillary for the community. This helps eventually improving OpenStreetMap data. And we are also displaying maps in the wild. Why I'm saying wild? Because we are surfacing our maps in front of like three billion uh, users. So we have more than three, three billion people um, at, uh, accessing our maps in different products. And we have only 7,000 OSMers who are maintaining OpenStreetMap data monthly. So our apps needs maps, therefore we are improving OpenStreetMap data. OSM is excellent and we are looking for a ways how we can make it more excellent and the answer is like we need more edits, more quality edits, and then we need more mappers. And this is pretty much like our way of like consuming uh, OpenStreetMap data along alternative data sets and machine learning data and we are bringing all of those uh, data uh, and creating a map and surfacing on our products. So here are some examples of our products. So we got Facebook pages where you see maps, then Instagram discovery, you can search nearby location, what's going on around you. And then we have marketplace where you can look for places uh, around what uh, if people are selling stuff. All right, slowly getting there, why are we doing this? Okay, you got it like why we're building maps, but why pedestrian? So most of our users are basically on food and they're getting around on food and then they are looking for, for places on our products. They are saving places on Instagram, Facebook, and they wanna get there eventually on food. And we're working on like bringing digital world uh, closer to uh, phys phys physical world. And we are uh, working on like building uh, solutions where you can interact with the digital world um, through your uh, wearables. And then that's why we are working on like improving pedestrian uh, map data. So when we are talking about like pedestrian map data, we are talking about like pedestrian ways, specifically sidewalks, crosswalks, and any routable features um, where pedestrian can route. And then including also um, barriers, uh, accessibility, those are really also important point for us. And other safety features like traffic lights, traffic signs, et cetera, those are also very important for us. And yeah, we will eventually get QA part of it, but you can see like list of QA tools uh, here where you can uh, get uh, OSM related errors. Probably you know uh, most of them like Osmos, Keep Right, uh, Keep right uh, OSM Inspector. And then none of those tools have a pedestrian focus approach, therefore, we come up with our approach, streamlining pedestrian map data quality check, because we believe like small quality issues uh, may have huge uh, negative impact when it comes to like routing. It can create like unsafe routes, longer routes, it can cause you a lot of time, and then it can even lead you to dangerous um, crossings. And then it's really hard to find those uh, issues when you are basically interfacing uh, with uh, OSM editing editing tools. 
it's really hard to see those uh, those errors. However, they're everywhere. And then, because it's really hard to understand because uh, rendering tools are not uh, rendering those errors, but routing graphs are heavily impacted by those uh, errors. Therefore, like, we are we streamline um, our uh, QA effort for pedestrian map data, and Yunzi will talk about uh, the di dimensions we are considering. Julia? Thank you, Sai. Um, so speaking of pedestrian infrastructure, there's, there are many aspects uh, can affect to determine whether the pedestrian infrastructure is ready for navigation, right? So imagine when you're going to the grocery store from home, um, and when you're walking on the route, uh, what's your primary concern? Uh, safety, right? Uh, if the route is safe, and then how efficient of the route is, right? So that's why we, de we start our development on uh, four dimensions. Um, trying to uh, address issues that around safety and efficiency. So the first dimension is safety. Um, of course, safety always first, um, because you probably don't want to get into any car accidents when you're just going to a grocery store or in any scenario. Um, so quality checks in this dimension um, is to look for uh, any obvious issues that cause dangerous routing. Like the example here, um, the, this motorway um, doesn't have a sidewalk go along with it in reality. It's a proper highway 101. But on OpenStreetMap, it does have the foot tag here inc indicating uh, it's walkable. So the quality check within this dimension will reflect these issues and encourage users to validate whether it is true or not and making fixes accordingly. And the second dimension is data consistency. Um, so this dimension is, the quality check in this dimension is primarily looking at any inconsistent properties or shape of the data. Right? Like the example shows here, for the same crosswalk, the crossing line string and the crossing node have different value for the crossing tag. So the quality check will flag these issues and ask the user to validate which one is the more correct information and keep the data being consistent for the same, uh, same feature. Um, and the third dimension is feature accuracy. So the quality check in this dimension is to look for um, any invalid behavior on the pedestrian uh, on the pedestrian data. Um, like the exa example shown here, the left side shows the pedestrian way crossing the highway improperly, and the example on the right side shows the tagging um, of this highway uh, for the sidewalk um, could be improper. So the quality check will flag these issues. Um, and we also in integrate some machine learning approach in this uh, for quality checks in this dimension to look for invalid behavior and also wa validate the accuracy of features. And the last dimension is information enrichment. Um, so the quality check in this dimension is mostly look for any missing information that can help to optimize the route and balance safety and efficiency. Like the example here, it's a missing uh, a crossing tag indicating whether this is a traffic signal control crosswalk or whether this is a, a no traffic signal control. Um, so this information could, the quality check within this dimension can, can help um, to make the routes uh, being most optimized. And for this dimension, we also have uh, integrated some of our machine learning approach to, um, to allow users to edit uh, some machine learning crosswalk and sidewalks to OpenStreetMap. And the methodology of this project is actually really straightforward, just like how we develop any other quality checks. We go through three stages, so like collecting the issues, developing uh, issue detection logic, and streamlining the issues to a preference. So in our collect issue collection stage, we rely, rely on two sources. The first source is we identify potential issues based on the four dimensions. And the second source is we, is we taking um, integrity check requests from other teams. And once we have the issue collected, we move on to the development stage, which is constructing logic for problematic features, uh, detection, and developing the fixing strategy. And once the, the detections and the fixing strategy has been done, then we, s we set up the monthly pipeline um, and publish the issue candidates to map relate, um, and then uh, share to any users who work on the fixing the issue or validating the issue and submit to OSM. 
And when the data gets into OSM, we also will use the, the fix to refresh, also use the monthly pipeline to refresh the data in that release. So we won't work on any duplicated easy candidates. And at the meantime, the fixes on OSM will also help improve the logic constructions on the detection and the fixing. And so far, we have developed uh, 16 integrity checks uh, within the four dimensions. Um, and for example, the suspicious sidewalk check is focusing on flagging those highways have high speed limits and high length count, but at the meantime, still have the sidewalk check. So we flag these issues and encourage user to validate whether the sidewalk is legit. Um, the other example is the conflicting sidewalk check. Uh, whenever the highway, including both the sidewalk uh, check and the sidewalk column, both check and the value are uh, different, then it will be flagged by this quality check and encourage user to validate. Um, some of these checks uh, has the global scale and some of it, these only cover selected cities. Um, so here is the map relay project that including uh, all the quality checks that we have developed for production process. Um, so our development actually not just stopping at, div uh, sorry, our project doesn't stop with development. We're also working on validating and fixing. Um, and here's the chart showing some uh, two checks that, the progress of two checks. You can see that uh, with the development and validating fixing process, the, the issue count actually dropped significantly for a certain area. And the validating and fixing effort also doesn't stop within, uh, within just our internal mapping team. We also um, work with the local community actively uh, to work on the, to address the issue that flagged by our development. And Saeed will go through some community activity. Thanks, Yunzi. I'll be very quick. I think I got two minutes. Um, so we work with local communities um, across the world. So I will talk about like a few examples here. So Mobility Agency of Milano Municipality, uh, this is the one organization we collaborate along um, other partners like Wikimedia Italy, Polymappers, and TomTom. Tom. We basically like um, help um, Milano Municipality to uh, use our Seamline pipeline to address uh, pedestrian map data quality. And then they have their own in-house editors, which they are addressing those uh, integrity and quality checks and they're fixing it. Over the, over the three years, uh, Milano Municipality mapped uh, more than 2,000 kilometer sidewalk and then more than 15,000 crossing. And then it's one of the mo best uh, map pedestrian map data on OSM in Europe. I'm not sure about the US uh, data, uh, US cities. And then we're also working, um, identifying like missing uh, crossings uh, from the high resolution aerial imagery and then creating a map roulette challenges for the community and community just address those uh, missing uh, crossings. Uh, continue with like uh, another collaboration in London. This is where I'm based at. So we collaborated with like local OSMers uh, in London and map um, missing crossings in London. Uh, again, like same approach. We detect like uh, mark crossings from high resolution aerial imagery, generated like uh, map roulette challenges. And then we ask community to verify those uh, crossings and then ingest to OpenStreetMap. And um, our crossing detections are available for four to, four to three cities. Um, and then there is another like successful project in Austin. Uh, Austin crossings are also mapped uh, by the community. I think uh, you help us with like mapping a few of them. Thank you, just wanna give you a shout out. And then, yeah, then uh, NYC sidewalk mapping and validation. So we mapped uh, all the sidewalks and validate quality check um, in Brooklyn area. Uh, thanks to great leadership uh, by chat. And then we have also like some uh, validity uh, integrity checks uh, on map roulette and local OSMers are uh, addressing those issues. And tomorrow my colleague Ed is uh, presenting uh, overall walkabout project and our effort when it comes to like pedestrian mapping. So save the uh, time and um, date. And then, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. I appreciate it. If there's any question, we can address that. Uh, you want to go over to, yeah, please. 
Sorry, what was the process look like for getting uh, new cities um, covered by your ML crossing detection program? like having a high resolution uh, aerial imagery uh, depends like where you're at so we can definitely chat if you have uh, access to high resolution imagery in your city uh, we can just run our pipeline and then create a map relate challenge uh, for your city again like similar to like streamline uh, QA uh, tasks so ML cross crossing detection projects are also continuous project whenever like we get like new aerial imagery we are populating uh, those tasks so recently uh, we updated our uh, ML crossings. Now we got 49,000 NIV crossing across 43 cities. Uh, a lot of <laughs> crosswalks to be mapped. So, um, so yeah. Any other questions? When you generate data, for instance, like in London, like uh, most of the sidewalk geometries are not mapped, but uh, most of the road segment has uh, attributes which tells about like if there is any sidewalk crescents in this road. And in this case, we basically get feedback from community like, okay, how do you want us to map those uh, sidewalk? And if you map geometry, you obviously need to uh, remove those attributes, uh, either like sidewalk separate or you know sidewalk right or left. So Again, like it kind of like ad hoc communication. We uh, explore how local communities mapping um, sidewalks in this uh, area and then kind of uh, follow their trend because obviously we don't want to change their way of like mapping and it's already like discussed a line and it's kind of like historic um, experience, yeah. However, like if someone is really caring about like accessibilities, they need like curbs, and then also like how do you map curb to other like uh, connecting uh, nodes? So those are like very important use case for accessibility. But like if you care about like routing, it's actually nothing really important. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you again. Appreciate it.